this is Draw My Life Antibiotic Style. Let's start with the basics. What are antibiotics? Where do they come from? And how do they work? Antibiotics are any substance that stops the growth and replication of bacteria or kills it outright. They're designed to target infections within or on the body. But where do those nice little pills in our medicine bottle come from? They start as compounds produced in nature by soil microbes and fungi. Scientists collect the soil, grow the microbes in a lab, isolate microbes that produce antibiotics, then isolate the antibiotics. Well, how do these antibiotic compounds work? Most antibiotics target processes essential for bacterial life. Things like their cell wall, DNA replication, RNA synthesis, protein synthesis, the plasma membrane, or metabolic pathways. So, what's this antibiotic crisis I've been hearing all about? Antibiotic resistance occurs by the start of a bacterial infection, which is a proliferation of harmful bacteria. So as this particular bacterial strain is reproducing, mutations can occur and create bacteria that is resistant to antibiotics. And this is a big problem because now since the bacteria have become resistant to the antibiotics designed to kill them, it makes curing these infections very difficult and sometimes impossible. Now, you might be wondering, aren't pharmaceutical companies and researchers looking for new antibiotics or something? I mean, somebody's got to be looking for a cure. The truth is, pharmaceutical companies aren't particularly interested in investing in research for new antibiotics. Some companies have gone as far as to stop this research altogether. Even organizations like the NIH also provide minimal funding for antibiotic research. Pharmaceutical companies profit off of making drugs that people can use. The problem is, antibiotics essentially cure bacterial infections. Drugs like painkillers and treatments for chronic illnesses are far more lucrative. As a result, pharmaceutical companies choose to spend money on treating us, not curing us. It's all a money game. So, are global causes the only ones to blame for this crisis? Let's present an example. It's midwinter season. You were feeling fine a couple weeks ago, but suddenly your throat begins to hurt, followed by a stuffy nose, a fever, and chills. Your muscles start to ache and you feel tired as if all the life has been sucked out of you. You go to the doctor. Surprise! Turns out you have influenza, aka the flu. All that runs in your mind is, how will I get to school without dying? How am I going to do work without wanting to pass out? Your doctor says he'll put you on a 10-day antibiotic treatment. Let's dissect the scenario. Influenza, or the flu, is a viral infection that mainly attacks your respiratory system. Note that the key word is virus. In order to treat a viral infection, you require the use of an antiviral, a drug or medicine that combats viruses specifically. As the name should indicate, an antibiotic combats bacterium. Therefore, it's not reasonable to use an antibiotic to fight a viral infection. Don't do that, please. Secondly, we see it's the physician who makes the call to prescribe an antibiotic to a viral infection. Lately, we have seen the rise of the misuse as well as the overprescription of antibiotics by many doctors and other healthcare officials. By constantly overusing antibiotics, this creates constant selective pressure in which the bacteria can develop adaptations to resist the antibiotics, therefore rendering it useless and requiring higher doses or a completely new drug to treat the infection. All right, let's look at another case. This time, you do have a bacterial infection, pneumonia. Your doctor correctly prescribes you a 10-day antibiotic treatment. However, you feel great on day eight, so you stop. Wrong. Prematurely stopping the cycle of your antibiotic treatment is also a cause of resistance. Why? Aren't they dead? Mm, sort of. The majority of the bacteria causing your infection are gone. However, there are still some remnants who again take advantage of their mutations and pass it on to the next generation of bacteria. This means you still have pneumonia and it won't go away easily this time around. Misuse, overuse, and the failure to complete the full course of antibiotics are also factors that account for the antibiotic resistance crisis that occurs today. So, how can we resolve this issue? Let's look at some solutions and things we can do to fix the antibiotic crisis.
One avenue of solutions we can explore is that of education. It is important to teach people about the antibiotic crisis and how real of an issue it is. It is also important for people to understand when and why antibiotics are used and how antibiotic resistance occurs in the first place. Educating the population on antibiotics will deter people from misuse as they will hopefully understand it does influence their individual lives. Education will be an essential step in combating this crisis. Another solution towards fixing the antibiotic crisis is an increase in research. Advanced research in how antibiotic resistance occurs is crucial to understanding new approaches against it. In the past couple of decades, research in new antibiotics has declined, leading to a lack of development of modern antibiotics. It will be important to increase the amount of research in this area so that antibiotics can be developed that are effective against resistant and troublesome bacteria. Solutions to the antibiotic crisis can also be applied at an individual level. Firstly, it is important to only use antibiotics that are prescribed to you. Taking antibiotics that have not been medically deemed necessary for you or not finishing the full cycle can leave bacteria in your body and increases the chance of you developing antibiotic resistant bacteria. Also, it is important that you do not demand antibiotics from your physician for a viral infection as that also increases the chance of you developing antibiotic resistant bacteria. Lastly, safe hygiene like washing your hands and preparing food hygienically reduces the spread of bacteria and the chance of you getting an infection.